Greetings. Today I'd like to take you on a tour of a very unusual jukebox, the Wurlitzer Model P10 from 1934. Uh, this was the first jukebox that Wurlitzer ever created that it actually used uh, in public with the Wurlitzer uh, logo on it. Uh, there were about 4,500 of these made in 1934. Uh, this is serial number 1422, which places it in the first one-third of the production cycle. It has some very unusual features which are much more like the debutante, which was the prototype jukebox made in 1933 by Wurlitzer, and uh, these features are not shared with the majority of P10s that were made later in the year. Uh, like Much like the debutante, uh, it has a beautiful case uh, with all sorts of really nice contrasting veneer, nicely finished, uh, contrasting moldings, over here on the side is the first of the unique features that the early P10s have, which is an externally accessible cash box. This is a fairly stout metal door with a lock. We turn the key, open it up, and you can actually take your money from the cash box without having to open the front door of the jukebox or pull it out from the wall and go in through the back as you did with the models that were a little later than this. Uh, after you've taken your money, you close it up, lock it back up, and hope to God that the burglars didn't uh, follow you so shortly thereafter and steal your money. I guess that's why they discontinued this, because it was just too tempting. Uh, imagine you get a screwdriver after this, and you could probably break in and steal the money. So they just went with a very, very... Um, much more difficult to operate internal cash box which was not quite as accessible. Let's come around here to the front of this. We got the original wooden grill. Beautiful, very fragile and easily kicked in. It wouldn't last probably one night in a bar nowadays. Uh, we've got an unusual coin slide here. Now the coin slide, instead of being two separate slides, uh, one for a dime and one for a nickel, is a single wide slide with two holes. I've seen Seabergs that had this same type of arrangement. Uh, it's a little simpler and a lot stronger than two smaller slides. Okay, then uh, if you put the dime in here, it goes in through a chute and will click through uh, two micro switches. The nickel would fall through a separate chute and click one micro switch. We're going to see those when we go inside this jukebox. You'll see exactly how the coin gear works. Over on this side, we have the selector uh, that is a semicircle of uh, little phenolic keys. There's uh, 10 different keys here, one for each selection, which makes sense. Uh, on the door, we've got the original Wurlitzer decal and some really nice engraving that, uh, where the glass was engraved. And um, this, I think, is just an extra nice touch. You would never see that on any sort of a, of a modern piece of uh, equipment. Um, where they just care more about profit than they do about appearance. Let me get the key over here. We'll unlock the door and open it up. And we'll see down here that we've got the... Actually, we're going to see this type of uh, selector panel in later models. It's very simple. It doesn't have those fussy little metal uh, title strip holders. It's just simply a sheet of steel that has the little holder stamped out and you need rather short title strips but they fit right in. Very basic, very simple. On the sides, on both sides, we have what looks like stage lighting and these are metal cans that are covered on top and the metal can uh, has a little trap door cut out of it, and there's a light bulb inside, and that light shines in on the mechanism, whereas the trap door here will block the light from closing your pupils and, and glaring in your eyes, but it will illuminate the mechanism in all its glory, which is pretty, glor uh, pretty glorious, actually, when you look in and you see the very unusual which I think is only on the earlier P10s, the cantilevered tone arm. Okay, I mean, you got to admit, you probably, no matter how many Wurlitzers you looked at, you just don't see tone arms like this. And it's got the horseshoe magnet coil 
head with the copper covering uh, tracks at about three and a half ounces instead of three and a half grams, which uh, would be a whole lot better on the records. We've got a probably sheet steel mural on the back that has been sprayed with kind of a brassy gold colored clear spray to tint it to look like brass, but I believe it is sheet metal. Now, the second, another, well, actually third feature that is very unique to this jukebox is that we have our normal record stack here, 10 records, and we have the pivoting unit here at the rear. But what's odd is there is another pivoting unit up above. And if you notice the selection arm back here that's going to be drawing uh, records, pushing them out, is much longer than you would expect. It's about twice as long. And it has this second story comb on top. I don't know if that stabilizes this unit. I don't know exactly what made them think of doing that. It just juts up there in the air like a smokestack. And I'm sure it serves a great purpose, but apparently they found a way around it because you don't see this on later model P10s and you sure don't see it on subsequent jukeboxes. Okay, so there's uh, the unique features. The trays are kind of unusual. They're a little different type cross-section than what you're used to seeing on Wurlitzers. They're nicely cast, very smooth, of a very stable type of metal, unlike a lot of record rings that I'm sure we've all encountered. Um, the turntable is sort of un unusual. It has concentric circles. Uh, it is flocked in black. And uh, we've got our little oil hole down here for the worm gear that uh, drives the turntable. All in all, all that fairly standard, but uh, with the tone arm, the unusual stack, and the external cash box, uh, those are several of the features that separate this from other Wurlitzer jukeboxes. Now what I'm going to do is pull it out, turn it around, and pull the back off, and we're going to see what it looks like inside. And believe me, there are some very unique features inside that I think you'll get a kick out of. So hang on, we'll be right there. Well, we're back now. I've got it pulled out from the wall, and we're going to take a look at the, at the back, the controls and other weird features of this unique jukebox. Volume control here with some crazy looking old-fashioned knob. Um, the normal screens, we see that this is an idea they're going to keep for a long time. We've got the ID tag here with the serial number 1422. Okay, we have uh, more screens for cooling for the amplifier and the motor that drives it, but a really elaborate and nice back door. Okay, notice also there are no external switches of any sort on the back of this. This took me a while to understand. The idea being you cannot have this plugged in and turned off. It's on all the time, and the internal illumination does not come on until somebody puts the money in, sort of the way automatic works in the later jukeboxes. So, I guess theoretically, you put this in the bar, you plug in the cord, and it sits until somebody slides a nickel or a dime in the front, and then the interior lights up and it plays with the volume adjusted, hopefully, to a pleasant level. Okay, that's it for the back. Now I'm going to pull the back door, and we're going to take a look inside. Okay, fasten your seat belts. It gets crazy. Okay, now we have the back removed, and you can see the interior of the player compartment from behind. This part here is fairly similar to the Simplex, with the springs and the record uh, tray stop, but we've still got this crazy upper kind of a comb up here to guide the uh, device that goes up and down seeking the records. As you can see, the tone arm does have a heavy rear weight. It is cantilevered. Um, really nice castings with the heavy gold wrinkled paint. Uh, not much else to see upstairs we haven't already seen, but downstairs is where the fun begins. Let's start uh, over here on the right-hand side with some of the the wiring with heavy rayon covering. And this bulb is not a service bulb. This is a current limiting resistor for when the coin 
uh, sensors back here receive coins and the coin goes through and makes them bounce. Uh, if their coin sticks, then it won't burn everything up. The light bulb will restrict the flow of current through the system. We've got the original tag that came with the motor and this is the split phase clutchless motor with wool packed bearings. Rather quaint. Let's look at this now. Uh, we've seen, I've seen motors like this before. We've got the oiling ports here at the end with the wool packing. And then it's all mounted in a wooden box with springs like a trampoline. So you can wiggle it back and forth and absorb vibration. Most peculiar. Um, typical phenolic plugs. Then uh, let's go over here. This is the accumulator unit, which is not all unusual, I guess. It's a cast box with a tin cover. We've got the play counter here to keep track, I guess, to make sure that nobody's stealing our money or skimming our profits. Uh, really an oddball star wheel, but I've seen things sort of like that before. But now let's look at a couple things that are really unusual, and that is the amplifier. The amplifier for this, it's supposed to be in a P10, it's supposed to be a model 453. This is not a model 453 amp. This is a rather unusual amp, and uh, it says that it's a model 6067A3-2. And considering that there are organ pipes up here on top, I don't know if that's Wurlitzer's just general trademark or if this is an organ amplifier that they appropriated for use with their new line of jukeboxes. Could well be. This is the tone control here. The electrodynamic speaker plugs in here. The speaker is a beauty. I'm not sure if it's a Magnavox or what it is, but it's the typical freestanding electrodynamic speaker mounted in rubber so that it can move around. There's the inside of the cash box. You can see the uh, containing sleeve of the, ca of the cash box with the coin slides, uh, the coin uh, chutes coming down and depositing their coins in the box. The coin gear reminds me of a Rockola. Very simple just a little micro switches and depending on which channel the coin goes down you either get one or two clicks. Um, I almost wish they'd stuck with that. This uh, the roto drive uh, coin uh, gear that they ended up with later is such a complex nightmare to work on. This is just utter simplicity and works well as long as you have some sort of uh, a slug rejection in the beginning which really I think all this has is a magnet to get uh, ferrous uh, like washers and uh, remove them from the system. Uh, all in all, pretty straightforward. There's a nice little touch here with some felt on the bottom to maintain lubrication for the tone arm shaft. You see how heavy duty it is and where the, the uh, shielded cable enters it. All very unique. I just have never seen anything like this on any other Whirlers or Jukebox. I've been working on them for 35 years, and when I got this, I just couldn't believe how unusual it was. And I thanked God that it was complete, because I don't know where you would go to find parts uh, like this amp, or this accumulator, or this stack, or this cantilevered tone arm. And from what I've seen of pictures of the interior of a debutante, this is exactly what was in them. If anybody out there has a debutante and either agrees or disagrees, please let me know because uh, I would like to know that. But on pictures I've seen of them that were going to go up for auction, uh, they would open the back door and you'd just see the wretched, broken down interior on them. Usually they're in really ratty shape, but this was what was inside. Um, including this really bizarre, I think, organ amplifier. Okay, so I hope you have enjoyed this tour of a rather unique jukebox. It's historically very significant. Uh, Wurlitzer went on to be the predominant jukebox maker in the world, and this was their very humble beginnings. But as you can see, the engineering, uh, the just craftsmanship was there. 
And I would say if I saw this back in 1934 and he said, do you want to invest some money in Wurlitzer? Uh, they're going to start making jukeboxes. I think I would invest. I think it's an impressive device. I hope you agree, and I appreciate your time and interest.